Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here and welcome back to the final chapter of the brilliantly well made and written game, Tell Me Why. Now this is where we finally see the true ending of what happened to Mary Ann, what really happened anyway, the search for the kid's father and a whole lot of head fucks along the way. But before we get into it, be aware that there are of course two different endings, one with seeing Alison or the one with Tyler and you get achievements for finishing the game strongly or weakly in terms of your relationship with the other sibling. Now this of course depends on what you have chosen through the game, so if you've been following my guide, you've noticed every option strengthened our relationship apart from when I hit on Mike after a plushy fight. It looked like you had a big bulge, wee. So what you'll see me do is continue to strengthen the twins relationship all the way through. That would unlock two achievements at the end of the game, twins for life and lock up and go away, which is Tyler's ending. And to get the other two achievements for seeing Alison's ending and having a weak bond by the end of the game, we will need to replay from around halfway from chapter two, which then you've all you've got to do is be a dick throughout and that should be enough. So of course, if you want to play less of the game later, if you have, if you sort of make good and bad decisions throughout chapter one and two, obviously you won't have to play as much of the game. But you know, it, it generally does depend on what you have done through the first and second chapter. But like I said, it'll only be like an extra hour at the end of the game anyway. But what I have done is go through the whole sections again with you rather than show you in bits. But I will explain more in depth as we get there anyway. Because for now we are waking up with Alison completely losing our head. Which we so often do in reality anyway. <laughs> I think a nice dose of LSD she needs. That'll perk her right up. I'm kidding of course. Drugs are bad. Okay.
you killed me! By the way, no audio at this point again, because, you know, just like the first two, copyright issues! Well, there is a goddamn guilt trip if I ever did see one. I mean, she did kill her ma by the looks of things, but still, Alison either needs to get to the bottom of things or just be on a constant acid trip, but I do highly advise against that second one as, you know, drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> so anyway, the first thing we'll do, walk out of the room. Again, you know, you can keep taking a look around at things as you've obviously had all the choice to do what you want through the games, but as soon as you get to the bottom of the stairs, go to the left, and go into Chief Brown Pants' room right here. Because we will be um, getting our first collectible before we do anything. Again, take a look around if you so wish. But to the left and on the shelf, sort of the second one from the top, examine that. Now you actually have to examine with this first before you're able to go and get the coin that we need. So look, look at it. Um, otherwise you won't be able to take the coin and then it just wastes about 30 seconds. And man, that is such a minor inconvenience. I'm only looking at this because she said it's personal, and uh, nothing gets you more going than reading through someone's personal letters, eh? <laughs> anyway, we are out of the room, and if we take a look to the right, obviously, Alison's going to try and remember some memories, but her head is just three ways from Sunday at the minute. It's not very, very good. So go to the right, and then just on this cabinet by the window behind the settee, you will see Alison's purse, or wallet, or... I don't know what they call it in America, to be fair. It's a, in Britain, it's 
A purse for a woman and a wallet for a man. Ooh, sexism and stuff. Anyway, uh, you can make sure to take the coin. You can have a look in the wallet. We do need an ID, but we've actually got to interact with the paperwork first before we can do that. So just go ahead and go back to Chief Brown Pants' room, which of course is straight through the door, past the stairs and on the left. And then when you put the coin in, that will give us our first out of three only collectibles. We all knew, deep down, we just knew. So well done for everyone who managed to grab them without having to go through the game again. So head to the kitchen, see where the waffles are. Personally, I would go straight for the waffles before the paperwork, but that's because I'm a fat shit. Um, <laughs> but grab the paperwork, you'll have a tiny little memory right here. And now we need to find our ID and pay stubs. And the ID, as we already know, is in Alison's purse which was just behind us on the cabinet under the window in the living room right there. So grab that first. And have a look at the mouldy old pizza. Come on, man, couldn't even be asked to chuck the pizza out or close the box. That's just lazy at its bloody peak, isn't it? Ah, uh, here's my idea. <laughs> I, know what, I know what he means, though. This place was never much more than a bachelor pad, huh? There was so much I planned to do. All those sacrifices I made. And how do you repay me? Lying to my face. You're not my child. My clan deserves better. Torturing yourself. Just grab your pay stubs so you can get the hell out of here. Bless her. She is well and truly fudged up, isn't she? So now we are heading back up the stairs. Again, we'll be seeing a few memories, but this is where Allison's pay stubs are. So this is all story related. <laughs> Brother, sister, we look out for each other. That's what you said. But you don't mean what you say, do you? They're just words. You left me, Allison, all alone and scared. <laughs> Here they are. Hey, they don't really look like stubs to me. Mind you, that's why Americans have better McDonald's. Okay. Stubs over in the UK is exactly. small, diddy little things. And in America, it's bloody huge. And I like that. I'm actually dying for an American McDonald's right now. Anyway, <laughs> we're heading down the stairs now. We're going straight down to the basement, which is right next to the stairs. We are finding our phone as... D. Wilson, if you remember, we had to hack into her computer for an achievement in the first chapter. She's trying to give us a ring because we are going for luncheon. My dove, 
Only thieves and monsters hide in the dark. Fly back to the light, Allison. What the? Hey. No, no, no. I cannot deal with you right now. What's it doing here? Hey, Dee. Finally. I was starting to get worried. Why didn't you pick up? Yeah, uh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't have my phone on me. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were still on for lunch. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm getting ready right now. That so? Because it kind of sounds like I woke you up. That's just how I sound. But anyways, I still have a few things to do before I can leave, but I'll be there. All right, hon. See you soon. Get it together, Allison. Come on. Grab the file, get dressed, and head out. Or it'd be nice to make a gift for Dee. God, my hands are still shaking. Hmm, make a gift for D. Nah, sorry, hun. My head's about to explode as it is. Can't be stressing about making a bloody wooden ting, especially if I need to get it done by lunchtime. Blech! Eh, screw that. So, as we know, we'll head back up the stairs. We're going to have a long cutscene now with Michael and... Hey guys. The weirdly creepy Tom. There's just something about him that just, just makes him seem... pervish to death. Maybe it's the beard. Hmm. Or maybe it's just the fact that his wife sacked us from our job because she is a biatch. Freezing my butt off out here. Okay. Uh, thanks. Is Tyler not around today? No, he's uh, busy out at the old house. I see. It must be hard to sell the place you grew up in. So many memories, right? Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. I really hope so. So, Tessa told me a little bit about what happened at the cemetery. Yeah, I'm sorry it got so intense. It's just, we really needed to understand why Marianne did what she did. Especially Tyler. Oh, of course, of course. She gets that. You two didn't say anything she wasn't already thinking. She spent years blaming herself. Well, she wasn't the only one involved. There was a lot of blame to go around. I'm glad you're able to see that. It seems like your brother, well, he, he's not nearly so forgiving, is he? He has been pretty harsh. Especially on Eddie. But we both got tired of people lying to us for our own good. Yes, of course. Uh, totally reasonable. Though, I am sorry you're the one taking all the repercussions. I heard about the fight with your uncle. I really hope your brother appreciates your sacrifices. He will. I... I mean, he does. I'm sorry, but I, I'm pretty beat. Oh, oh of course. I'll, I'll let you rest. Tell Michael there's no need to hurry back. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, Tom. Bye now. Take care. Sorry for abandoning you out there. Pro tip, avoid catching a ride with Tom at all cost. Did he talk about the new spicy chocolate bars? Yep. And exactly what they do to his digestion. What's up with him? I'm not sure I've ever seen him so eager to help. I think he and Tess are legitimately concerned. Plus, door-to-door uh, -door is part of campaigning, right? Yeah, I guess. Help yourself to some waffles if you want. That's Eddie's way of saying I'm worried about you. Oh, that's cute. But I had a ridiculously huge breakfast, so I'm good. I don't know about you, but I just really need to get out of Delos Crossing. Well, we're on our way soon, right? Right. 
I don't know. I, I've just got this feeling it's gonna fall through and, and I'm gonna be stuck here forever. That's not happening. We've got a plan. <sighs> I'm glad you're here, Michael. Thanks for coming. Coffee and a friendly face is just what the doctor ordered, right? I just feel like cuddling up in front of the TV all day. Maybe finally binge that last season of Witches of Eldom. Then do it. Ah, uh, I gotta drag my lazy ass out to have lunch with Dee. Allison, what's going on? Tyler and I had a fight last night. I was so excited to have him back, but what if 10 years was too much and we're too different? I don't think so. You just need to get to know each other again. Start with the small shit. Figure out what each other's favorite foods are, you know? And then build up to the big stuff. Yeah, that, that makes sense. The last few days have been a lot. And it's totally okay to be overwhelmed. You're gonna figure it all out. Families are fucked up. <laughs> They're basically fuck up factories. You're right. I just need to relax. So, maybe this will cheer you up. I think I found the perfect place. Check it out. It's pretty cool, right? Deposit's a bit high, but it's got two large bedrooms and a view of the channel. Honey, you're really going to give up our home to live in this ugly box? Oh God. Allison? Allison, look at me. Are you okay? I'm just... Um... I need to... I, I just need to sit down. So just remember throughout the entire game then, I'm still being nice and strengthening our relationship with Tyler. Again, we only have to replay from about halfway from chapter 2 to get the week end in, so just remember that. But of course, the choice is completely up to yours. So for now, I tell Michael about the memories, because we're just being nice to everyone. But like I said, the choice is completely yours. My anxiety is through the roof. I can't eat anything without getting sick and... And I've been seeing things. Memories. Of Marianne and me and Tyler when we were kids and, and Eddie and... It used to just be stuff I'm pretty sure really happened, but... Now I see them everywhere. Shouting every shitty thought I've ever had about myself. I don't know how much more of it I can take. That's intense. I'm sorry, has... Anything like this happened to you before? Right after Marianne died, I had a lot of panic attacks, but nothing exactly like this. Come here, Allie. I hear you. Okay, I hear you. You must think I'm completely nuts. No, I think you went through some really bad shit. You never saw anyone about it, right? Yeah, I, I've looked into therapists a few times, but they're all so far away and so expensive. Well, you know what I went through in 2011. I don't know if I'd still be here if I hadn't gotten help. You got that money coming in from the house. For our apartment in Juno, I don't want to bail on you. Look, I know you hate letting people down, but you got to put your own oxygen mask on first. I get that, and so does Tyler. Thanks. I'll try. <sighs> I really need to work on the house today, but Tyler's crashing out there. Not sure if I'm ready to face him. 
if you want, I could go out there, see how he's feeling and if he's ready to talk. What do you think? Yeah, maybe that could work. I hope he'll talk to you, though. He's never been the best at opening up to new people. You sure? Yeah, of course. I don't mind trying if it might patch things up between you two. Oh shit, I'm gonna be late for my lunch with Dee. I still need to change and stuff, but I can drop you off at the store if you want. Sure, thanks. No, Michael, thank you for listening. I mean it. Hi, Dee. Hey, beautiful. You okay? Cause, girl, you look like shit. I, uh, haven't been sleeping well. But here I am. That's how much I love you, right? Oh. Well, I appreciate us having a girl's lunch anyway. Just give me five minutes so I can finish off this paperwork. Oh, no rush. I need to drop off some stuff with Eddie. All right. Oh, uh, help yourself to some cobbler. Mrs. Romero sent it over after I caught her flasher. It's in the break room. You better hurry before Greg's kills it off. Mrs. Romero's cobbler? I'm on it. <laughs> I'll meet you in there when I'm done with this. So then, we've made it. We'd rather come down to the police station to have crappy old cafeteria police lunch rather than have delicious snacks and watch Netflix and chill with yourself all day. <laughs> Netflix and chill with yourself? Wink, wink. No, I mean it. Netflix and chill. The, 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 it's the mind. It's not the mouth it comes out of. It's the mind it goes into. Trust me. So you don't actually have to look at this bit, but I thought it was hilarious that there is a sort of midget bandit, or a kid-sized bandit, as they so called it, on <laughs> on the loose in Delos Crossing. But <laughs> to get rid of the story, or to progress the story, we'll go up the stairs. We won't be talking to Chief Pants, um, but just, le uh, just left to his door there, you see something that we can post our file into. I should probably drop the paperwork here. Eddie's going to be busy for a while. And with that, we can now head back downstairs, go into the cafeteria where Officer Greggs, the one with the shitty ass haircut, is sitting. And then you will now you can interact with the bit of cobbler. Oh, hello, Officer Haircut. Shit cut. Crap cut. Ah, sorry, I honestly forgot your real name. I just can't stop looking at that fro on top. Or lack of fro. So anyway, you've got to obviously put the file down before you eat the cobbler, but we are coming up to another achievement. This part takes quite a few minutes, it's just the time of the game. Basically, D is going, there's going to be somebody who comes in and talks to D. But we have the opportunity to then eavesdrop on who is destroying all the mailboxes. Uh, somebody's coming in, basically they're going to talk about who it actually was, and then when D comes in, you have to answer with the correct one, which I will let you know momentarily, but stop talking to Officer Crap Cut, and then just keep your eye on D. As soon as you see someone coming in and talking to her, just keep eavesdropping on her. You'll be able to eavesdrop by pressing the A button on the door when she starts. There it is. So eventually that look will turn to eavesdrop, and then you'll be able to find out who it is. Looks like Greg's owes me 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. A raccoon of all things. Not sure where he came from. Oh. Probably hitched a ride on a boat up from the lower 48. Well, you Dr. Torres, it seems see like you've cracked spine, the right? case of the mailbox bandit. Hey, Greg's. Got any big vacation plans coming up? Yeah, we'll probably go up to Anchorage for Thanksgiving. Linda's sister lives up that way. But... I'm also secretly planning a family trip to New York City for New Year's. 
Been saving for two years, and I got it all arranged under a fake email. That's really cool. I'd love to go there someday. It's probably our last big trip before Lauren's off to college, so I wanted to make it count. I'm sure everyone will have a great time. We haven't had a three-pointer coffee break in a while. <laughs> you remember how that one shot of yours went wild and smashed the picture of old Chief Burke? Yep. Couldn't show my face around here for a week. Eh, well, I'll let you in on a secret. Most people hated Burke anyway. Your dad's a far better chief than he ever was. Then we will proceed with the prisoner's transfer. Okay. I'll await further instructions in the parking lot. <sighs> so finally, after a few minutes have passed, the D comes in, and when she asks you, oh, we've called the mailbox Sorry, Bandit, who do you think it is? No press the left trigger and then reply with an animal. The X button, I believe, it will be an animal, so make sure to answer her with an animal, and that will unlock us the Mailbox Bandit achievement, the first missable one out of this chapter. Anyway, yeah, it's a raccoon. Delos Crossing's most wanted turned out to be some trash band of stowaway. <laughs> and this is how legends begin. Anyway, hun, I'm so sorry to bail, but I gotta run this little guy to animal control now. Probably best I take a rain check. Oh, it's it's okay. Totally, I understand. Duty calls. Thanks. Well, we need to try again soon. I feel so bad about missing your birthday. I thought about making you something, but I was a little strapped for time, so... No, I get it. With your brother back, I see where your priorities are now. What? No, no, it, it's not... Relax, I'm just kidding. I really gotta go now. Right, I'll call you later. And try to get some sleep, alright? See ya. What? That's it. All that effort for 30 seconds. I had more lunch with Officer Crap Cat, man. Could be all chilled out in the house, warm, snugged up, but I dragged my ass out here for 30 sorry seconds. Sound. Nicely done, D. <laughs> work. Lunch always comes before work, people. Yeah, Remember I'm that. Sorry about that. It got kind of out of hand. Don't worry. We know it wasn't your idea, but look, we're all worried about you. This isn't the Allison we know. The Allison you know? Yeah. The sweet, smart girl who'd never hurt anyone on purpose. I know you two and the chief made peace, but I gotta say, it ate at them all day. We did what we had to, to get what we needed. All right, I just want you to be careful. I've been doing this for a long time, and people, they mostly don't change, even when we really want them to. Look, I'm really tired, can we not do this? Allison, I like you, I really do. I've known you since you were a kid. You're honest, stable. You're not a troublemaker. Tyler, I mean, if he goes down, don't let him take you with him, okay? I, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, are you okay? Please just let me go. I need air, I need some air. Please stop. 
So this then is the first mini game of the chapter. Very simple mini games anyway, but basically Alison's having a bit of a panic attack. This is going to help her sort of calm down. So we are the white ring right there. And this bit's automatic, so don't worry about that. And our job is just to keep that white ring in the sort of greyer, thicker ring. It's very easy. All you have to do is just keep pressing the right trigger. Obviously not to get too far ahead, so you sort of... Um, coming on, uh, going on and coming off the right trigger, just keeping the white ring inside the thicker grey ring. And we have to do that a total of five times, and then that is that, so it's not too bad. It does get the tiniest bit faster as we get to the fourth and fifth time, but again, very, very simple. <sighs> Just keep going. In and out. My heartbeat's slowing down. Hold on. Are you fibbing? I'm scared. I don't know what these people are gonna be like. Or when I'm gonna see you again. We can still undo it. We can tell them what really happened. No way. It's done. That's it. You're gonna be there to talk on the voice if I need you, right? Of course. It'll almost be like we're still together. It's time to get going now, come on. Wait, Chief. Just a sec. Hey, uh, kids. I, um... I went back to the house and got a few things for you. I, I know how much he's meant to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Oh, kids, I... <laughs> This is just goodbye till next time, okay? <laughs> What are you doing out here? It's freezing. I just needed some air. What happened? What's wrong, little moose? I think I had a panic attack. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Let's get you inside and warmed up. Then we can talk about what happened. I'm sorry. This morning has just been so... God, I'm embarrassed. Don't be. You haven't had an attack in a while. What's going on? I've just been so wrong. About everything. Did Tyler say something to make you feel that way? No. It wasn't him. It was me. I failed him. Over and over. From here, it looks like you've been busting your ass to help him. You don't understand. Allie, you've got so much weight on your shoulders. With Tyler coming back and your big move, you know, maybe it's time to ease off some of this, some of this other stuff that's clearly stressing you out. If you mean Marianne, I can't. I owe it to Tyler to see it through. Do you? I don't know why you've always blamed yourself for that. It wasn't your fault. That's not true, Uncle. 
I was there. I... You were 11 years old. There was nothing you could do. You can't go on letting it haunt your every waking moment. <sighs> Look, you're not your mother, okay? What do you mean? I mean, something happened to her. Something bad. I don't know what it was, but... I never left her. You can't make that same mistake. You gotta tell those ghosts to move on. Uncle. It was me. I... is the one who... had the scissors. What? What, what are you saying? She... She was threatening Tyler. So I stabbed her. <laughs> confessed he he went to fireweed we lied we lied to everyone could you let him take the blame? It was a mistake, I know. But we were in shock. And Tyler wanted to take the blame. And I let him. <laughs> but we should have told the truth. It must have really hurt. Keeping that inside all these years. I pretty much just bottled it up. And now it's all I can think about. <laughs> Everywhere I look, she's there. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's not easy to admit something like that. It takes a lot of courage, Allison. <laughs> should have seen it. I'm so sorry. None of this was fair to you too. How are you feeling now? Any better? Relieved, actually. And really tired. Oh. I was remembering something earlier. I don't know if it even really happened. The day Tyler left for Fireweed. Did Sam come by with some of our stuff? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He did. How close were he and Marianne? I, I don't know exactly. But he cared about her a lot. Her... Her death really shook him up. He was over at our house a lot. 
fixing things, chasing off animals. I know you didn't turn up anything about who our biological father was, but did you ever think it might have been Sam? Oof. Well, your mom and him were close, so that's a possibility, but I never found any proof, no. I should go talk to him. Are you sure that's a good idea? You need to get some rest. I have to do this. And not just for Tyler. For me too. I love you, Uncle. Thank you for everything. I'll call you later. Now, I'm not sure about anyone else. I mean, I've never suffered with panic attacks or anything, but doing that in first person even got me feeling sort of worked up and quite tense. It genuinely felt like I was part of the game then and experiencing it too, which is so weird. But it was another brilliantly done segment of this game by Don't Nod, so fair play to them for that. Um, and as you've obviously just seen, and, and yes, yeah, so thanks to Officer Greggs for giving us, uh, making us sort of tip over the edge for that. I'm going to shave all your hair off now, you fat twat. And we have obviously just told Chief Brownpants that we were the one that actually killed Miriam. so now it's all kicking off. But now we're outside Sam's garage. This is where we will be getting another collectible and another missable achievement. So for now, the garage door's uh, not working there, so we need to go round the back, up Sam's back passage. <laughs> that means two things. And the missable achievement is very easy here. All we need yeah. to do is basically grab it's uh, like a can of a, a can of luby spray, which will help Sam fix the engine. Apparently, I don't know why he couldn't have got it himself, but we need to get it. But this is another one of those sort of timed sort of segments where we'll need to be waiting around three to four minutes until Sam asks us how's everything going with the house we can answer him then with I think it's slow or physically painful and then as soon as the automatic save happens in the bottom left hand corner that is when we can grab him the red uh, spray can and give it him otherwise for now we can't do anything else apart from look around for five minutes or so you can have a look at the engine you can talk to Sam you can have a look at other things that are about but all we're doing is basically waiting for that one dialogue wrong? option that will say, how is the house coming along? I, uh, never mind. Uh, where's your brother? Back at the house, I guess. <clears throat> so, uh, what's he getting up to today? Who knows? Huh. All right. So, um... What are you doing wandering around in the middle of the working day? I'm off today. Sam, could we talk now? It's a little important. Ain't that what we're doing? So, um... What are you doing wandering around in the middle of the working day? I'm off today. God. This article about ocean acidification is really unnerving. What's that? Oh, um, there's an article in today's paper about how climate change is ruining the ocean. Mm, yeah. <sighs> Fish have gotten puny. Spotting fewer and fewer whales. I don't know where we're headed, but <laughs> we sure as hell are going there. How's the, uh, how's the house coming along? Honestly, so that is what we were waiting for then that is the question that we were waiting for We now need to wait until the automatic save happens at the very 
bottom left corner, as we well, you would have noticed by now. And the can is obviously in the top left hand corner there. So until that save happens, we can't actually grab this. But we need to grab this and give it to Sam before he cuts his hand. So if he ends up cutting his hand, you will actually have to come back to this scene in isolation mode. Again, it only takes, you know, five to ten minutes or whatever. But again, again, it's just a slight minor inconvenience, isn't it? So you'll have to grab this as soon as that save happens. Grab the can, give it to him before he cuts his hand. But again, I think you get like another minute, minute and a half before he does that anyway. So as soon as that happens, grab the can, give it to him. That is where the achievement unlocks and that is where the story will progress. Me that wrench, will you? Sam, are you our father? <sighs> Figured you'd ask me that question someday. Well. I wish I was. What the hell kind of answer is that? I'm sorry, Ellie. But the man you're looking for... He ain't me. Oh, okay. Guess I'll just take your word for it then. Hey, you got no right coming in here, getting angry at me for something I got nothing to do with. You two are so close. I know you meant something to her. You honestly think I would have let you two grow up without a father? I may be a deadbeat, but... I'm no coward. But you must know something. I truly don't. Your mama, she never... Look... We were just friends. I mean, take a look at old Sam. No woman like Marianne would ever think twice about a guy like me. I'm so sick of this. I'm so tired of trying to unravel all of Marianne's fucking secrets. I don't... I don't understand her. I want to hate her so much. But I don't even know who she was. Come with me. I want to show you something. So now after we've been in Sam's garage fixing his boat, we are in his house slash office slash living quarters. Directly to the left of where you start is the desk. Examine the desk. Have a look in the top right hand drawer right there. And that is where we get collectible two out of three. So very important, of course, to grab that before we end up talking to Sam. In this part anyway, and accidentally moving on. Why is there a burnt-up pan in your garbage? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that. Uh, might have fallen asleep cooking dinner. Glad you're still with all this. Here, I, uh, kept a few things. Can I? She looks... Happy. Mm. She was. When was this? Why are you wearing a square hat? Oh, yeah, that was when I finally got my captain's license. 
Mary Ann's the one who pushed me to... Huh. Yeah, Laura took this one. We'd been working on that barn for months. That roof was a son of a bitch to sheath. Rain just kept on leaking into the loft. Wait, the barn has a loft? Oh, yeah. You didn't know? No, she didn't tell us. Is that a trap door? Yeah. Jimmy closed the whole thing up. Told her it was gonna be real hard to get any hay up there, but she said she didn't mind. Do you know what's up there? I could tell she didn't want to talk about it, so I respected that. Well, we're gonna have to empty it out for the sale, so I guess we'll know soon enough. Ellie, you really gonna go through with this? It's like I told you, that, that house meant everything to your mama. It's it's all that it's all we got left. <laughs> you can't just throw it away. I'm sorry. I know how hard this has been on you. But you need to move on. What's done is done. Maybe it would help to talk to someone about it? I never tell you about the time I broke my leg. Shin bone snapped in three different places. Stuck in my ass for a month. No use to anybody. I was so down, I couldn't even bring myself to get out of bed. But your mama, uh, she doesn't have none of that. She got me up one morning and drove me to a nice spot by the harbor. We watched the boats come in and out all morning. You can't let yourself be defined by the parts that are broken. That's what you told me. You gotta find a way to work with what you got. I think... I think about that... a lot. <laughs> gotta... Well, someone was looking a little bit nappy noodles there, wasn't he? I suppose you drink enough throughout your life, you do, you do tend to get quite used to napping whatever the hell you want. I guess. I'm like that anyway, and I'm not even al alcoholic, so I would just be constantly sleeping for 20 out of 24 hours of the day. Ha! Anyway, we're finally hitting our life with Tyler now. We are going to be playing as Tyler for the first time after about an hour of gameplay. Or about half hour gameplay and half hour cutscenes, but we are going to be ice fishing with Mike, where we'll be getting our third and sort of final miscellaneous missable achievement. Um, just coming up again. This bit with Michael does take at least sort of eight to nine minutes, so it is quite a um, quite a long one. But you know, it's all part of the fun. It's all part of the relaxation process. Yes. Listen, if you want to be alone, I'll go. But if there's anything you need to get off your chest, I won't snitch. You saw Allison? How is she? Yeah. I went back to check on her this morning. She was in a pretty bad way. 
whatever went on between you two, it, it wrecked her. Look, I don't want to drag you into this. Well, I'm already in it, and you look like hell, so... I just got a lot on my mind. Well, I know one thing that's good for that. As a wise man once said, fishing is the cure to the wounds of the heart. Was that wise man you? Hey, like I said, I gotta write my own legacy. So, you in? I, I don't know. Come on, we're burning daylight. Let's go. Uh, where are we gonna go? Why go anywhere when we have a perfectly frozen lake right here? Ice fishing in November? Yeah. It got cold way fast this year. Climate change. That shit's gonna kill us. But hey, fish first. You can walk behind me if you're afraid, though. You're actually serious. I am a very serious man, Tyler. Let's go. We still have to get everything out of the car. Stage is set. It's show time. Whenever you're ready. You sure you don't want to go? Nah. Look, no way I'm going to rob you of your first catch in your own backyard. <laughs> All right. Got everything you need, by the way? Yeah, I'm good. Man, I'm so gonna miss this. Miss what? Just hanging out and fishing and... You know, I'm not gonna have a lot of time after you move to Juno with school and the JC and everything. Right, right. So did any of the people you came up with at Fireweed land in Juno? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Once they left, I never really kept in touch. Really? Some of them were straight up awesome, but we just weren't that close, you know? None of them really got, like, family? I mean, I guess I got pretty tight with my counselor, Aaron, but I already have a family. Well, there's a reason we think of families as trees. They keep on sprouting new branches. And so, of course, a bit of conversation will happen, and then your line will start tugging. And I've got to be careful of this, because you, you get timed to be able to press A. So when you press A, what you have to do is press and hold the left trigger and get it in the sweet spot, which is right in the middle. Then press the right trigger to sort of reel him in, and it'll go back. So again, press and hold the left trigger. So if you're going on and off the left trigger to keep it in the middle, in that sweet spot, and then you can just constantly hold the right trigger when the prompt comes up there. So you're going back and forth between the one. It's Again, it's very, very easy to get used to. So don't worry, it's not, you know, it's not tricky at all. But to get the achievement, we actually have to catch both the second and the third fish. So we've got to catch all the fish. So don't get too complacent while Mike's talking in his droney old robot voice right there. Or pay attention to when your line starts going mad because you have around 10 seconds to interact with that line, otherwise the fish will be gone and you would have missed the achievement. So just pay attention. Don't get too complacent like I almost did. <laughs> Maybe. But who says I'm willing to share? Okay, fine. Be that way. You have this whole fancy bag just for ice fishing? You don't mix and match. Ever. Jeez, you don't mess around, do you? <laughs> Told you earlier. I'm a very serious man. So right here then, it's starting to go mad. So again, a timer would have started going around the A button, but I obviously got it very, very quickly. Again, the sweet spot is a little trickier, but I think you can go into the green zone and still be able to get it, no problem. It's if you go into the red zone, the fish will start uh, tagging and snagging away. So be careful of that, be wary of that. Uh, let me... Okay... Okay, <laughs> how about them apples? Oh, <laughs> nice job. So, you weren't all talk. Impressed? I only see two fish in my cooler. For now. 
So, about last night. I don't know what Allison said, but from my side, well, I thought we were on the same page. But it turns out we weren't. Hey, so don't tell her I told you, but last week your sister was almost unbearable. She was jumping up and down with excitement at you coming back. Really? <laughs> you better believe it. Look, the last time you saw each other, you were kids. Just because things have changed doesn't mean you can't work it out. I know. It's probably my fault. I really pushed her last night. I just don't get why she always has to run away from everything. Can you blame her? <sighs> Avoiding the problem doesn't make it go away. She's so fixated on selling the house. It's like she's trying to bury the past. All of it. Even the good parts. Look, I'm not picking sides here. Okay, but she's been murder house girl ever since it happened. Now she's got a chance to put it behind her and start fresh. <laughs> Shit, I'd be pretty eager too. I guess I didn't really think about that. I've been so focused on my own shit. It's been hard, you know? Figuring out how to live out here. You mean outside of fireweed? Yeah. When I first got there, all I could think about was getting out. It felt like a cage. But after a while, it started to feel more like a shell. I figured out who I was in there. But now I've got to work out how to be that person out here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, none of us really know what we're doing. Like, shit may look bleak now, but your sister's never gonna give up on you. And you can lean on me too if you want. Just be careful, okay? Got a bad left shoulder. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. Thanks for listening. Don't mention it. What are you gonna make with what we catch? Hey, you got me figured out. A slice of fresh fish, a couple of garlic, pesto, walnuts, just a drop of olive oil, pure perfection. As my partner in crime, you're entitled to a cut. Works for me, partner. Don't you say anything. I got... So there it is then, as long as you caught all three fish, this is where the achievement unlocks. You cannot have missed one fish, otherwise you'll have to come back to this point. Otherwise, good job. That is the third and sort of, that is definitely the final missable achievement. The rest then is for sort of endings and story related progress and the collectibles. Pretty personal. Sure. Personally, okay, let's get it out then. How big is that schlong diddly dong? Hey, it's a valid question, you know. A brother's gotta ask, a brother's gotta compare. Uh, romantically? Uh, yeah. A few. Have you? Uh, no. Not really. That's kind of surprising. I guess the right person just never came along. But you're open to the idea? Yeah, I could be. Let's say I'm reevaluating. You want my take on it? Sure. Heartbreak sucks. Look, I stopped listening to the entire indie folk genre just because I was dumped at a show once. But I put myself back out there just like everyone who's ever gotten their heart stomped on. Because when you meet someone who really sees you, you don't have to pretend anymore. And you're still interested in being that someone? Even after all the shit that's happened? Hey, I've got baggage too. I think it's worth a chance. Don't you? Uh, 
I think we're in total agreement here. Yeah? Yeah. I get this feeling like I could say or do anything with you, and it'd be cool. I feel safe. You are. Because your sister would kill me if I did you dirty. Uh, yeah, she would. So, doesn't look like you're catching anything with that. You want me to show you how it's done? Go for it. Missing the show. You okay? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, is one way to put it. Hey, Allie. I think I'll just show myself out. Okay, uh, call me later? You know I will. Sorry for interrupting. No, it's totally fine. We were done anyway. Catch anything? Mostly ice, but yeah. Tyler, I'm sorry for freaking out yesterday. All of this, it's just been really hard on me. Don't apologize. I was being an asshole. We should have never pushed you that hard. Come here. God, why did I miss you so much? It's only been a day. I've been told I have that effect on people. You dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to show you something. What? You're kind of weirding me out. Can we sit down for a sec? So, what is it? I was just at Sam's. He's not our father. How do you know? I asked him, point blank. I'm not surprised. Running down the barn didn't really seem like a Sam move. Yeah, I guess it was silly to suspect him in the first place. He'd never hurt Mary Ann's kids. There's something else. Look at this. This was taken in 1992 when Marianne first moved to Delos Crossing. See that ladder? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you pulling that picture out of then, girl? Make sure there's no brown on it before you show the title, mind. <laughs> Pull it out your ass. As far as he knows, yeah. What do you think? Should we give it a shot? We've come this far. And a hidden loft? That's got secret shit written all over it. Let's go.
So then, we are back in the barn. There is a lot directly above us right there, but we need to find a secret switch. Now, I don't know really if this is another sort of time section where you've got to wait a couple of, uh, like a minute or two, and we have to get through a little bit of dialogue, but I think to basically get through it, you'll have to look at the picture in which Alison is holding, and then you've got to go through a couple of sort of items, have a look at a few items on this side of the barn before the uh, string comes up. So, yeah, that's what I'm pretty sure you've got to do. I think that's what it is that you have to get the story forward, as you see in the picture. You see it there, and yes, so that is it then. Um, I, you could probably just see on the right-hand side when I stopped looking at the picture, that you were able to start looking at a box which was on the small shelf. And um, that is how you progress the story for then. So, I thought I saw something right over here, so again, have a little look, have a look at this little electric switch, and that should then be enough to be able to, for us to be able to the find the hidden switch. And then all we need then is to just grab the ladder from the other room and then we are on our way up. We've got a few puzzles to do with a few achievements to get and the final collectible up there. It's opening up. The secret keeper always did store all the best secrets in the clouds. Yep. Come on, let's find a- Well, that's way too high to jump. You want to give me a leg up? I'm so not touching your nasty shoes. We'll find a ladder. Can you see anything? Nope, nada. Here, found a switch. That shaved a few years off my life. She left us something. It's got a combination lock with letters. Do you think she hid the code somewhere in all this? Knowing oh, Mary Ann, probably. <laughs> well, you want to do this? Yeah, let's start here. Ooh, scurry stuff. So the three puzzles then, there's one right in front of us, which we are going to be doing first, so we can get the first collectible out of the way. So go ahead and interact with it. And then what we need to do is click on the title, which is above the Mad Hunter. And there it is, and you'll see it uh, be pushed in. Click on the castle to the left of the Mad Hunter, the tree in front of him, which is by the lake, the princess, which is behind the right hand tree, and then the Mad Hunter's left hand. Now, that will complete this puzzle. That will open up a compartment on the right-hand side. You can have a look inside and have a look at... Uh, there's a couple of letters and everything in there. And this is where we really do see Marianne's secrets and sort of what she's been keeping from us all these years. Well, she can't say nothing now, can she? She's dead, which is a bit awkward. Um, unless she speaks to us from beyond the grave, which is then just creepy. But more importantly, after you have a look at all these documents and things, there is the final collectible on the right-hand side. But the achievement does not unlock here. What we have to do is back out of this, turn right around, and you can see like little pedestals at the very back, um, both sides of this box. All you have to do is just set down each and every collectible on the left and the right-hand side, 
and that is where the achievement will unlock and then we can move on with the puzzles so we all bloody knew there was going to be collectibles achievements because there always is in games like this but don't not done it very well and i appreciate their effort in doing that the ice king goes in the forest obviously there you go stalwart moose That's the pious pelican spot. Crafty goblins go here. The wise princess goes in the big wooden house, of course. The mad hunter, always on the princess's trail. The moon hag's gotta be imprisoned in her lake. The very old beaver definitely goes in her den. So the next puzzle we're going to be doing is the one that Allison is standing by and all it is is you just have to um, move these sliders into the correct positions. So if we go left to right is 1 to 5 so move it. So the top one move it to the second slot. The one below move it to the first slot. The third one down move it to the fifth slot. And then the very bottom one move it to the fourth slot. Again, that is the one, so it's 2154, that will open up another compartment, and also note the letter on the door as well. That comes in very handy in terms of being able to open the box. Father. What the hell? Marianne was pregnant in 1992, before she even got here. Before us? Do we have a long-lost sibling out there somewhere? It's possible, but she could have given it up or miscarried. Who knows? Yeah, you're right. Do you think we could track down her father? You mean the grandfather she never told us about? I don't think I want to. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Fine, let's keep digging. Wow, she worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. And the third and final person then is directly behind us, and this is just pushing the correct things in order. So the very first one is the castle in the bottom left. The flowers in the sort of top middle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the giant clock sort of bottom right, and then the house in the top right or the middle right and then the bear with the table and the whatever the hell that is in the middle that is correct that opens up the other compartment now we find out that Marianne had chlamydia no she didn't have chlamydia I don't know what she had and um, but you're supposed to find out for yourself but note that these are missable, you actually have to pick up the paper to unlock the achievement for one and you can actually just uh, break open the box with a crowbar so if you do end up doing that you will actually miss this achievement and have to come back to it so of course the puzzles are simple enough it's easy enough just to do of course if you've been following along with the video as well it makes it a lot handier by the way I really don't know if Marianne had chlamydia probably did there's only like five guys to choose from in the whole of bloody Delos crossing not a lot of action going on she ran away to start a new life And then she made her way to Delos Crossing, where she was finally happy. But then the baby died. I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She left everything behind, built a whole new life for him. And then, he was just gone. I guess having us helps her move on. But when it looked like we were going to be taken away, she snapped. She just couldn't lose any more children. It 
really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but all I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah. But we still haven't seen what's in that chest. Okay, so how do we open it? So as I said then, there's two ways to open the bro uh, box of Brox. You can either break it open with a crowbar or do the puzzles, turn around and you see each letter on the door there, E, O and E. So basically we know the letters, we just gotta put them in an order. And the main order is the sort of bigger E, we'll call it a capital E if you want, on the left, the smaller E in the middle, so don't be confused with those two, and then the sort of O pattern, when it looks like an O, yeah. that will open it up. That, of course, um, gives us another strong relationship bond. That actually deteriorates if you decide to break it open, which, again, we'll just come back to and go through a little bit later on. But this bit is actually very sad and kind of extremely heartbreaking, so I'll leave you to it. Ollie, she, uh, she noticed. I was her son. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? Is that? Leo Ronan. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? We did. It's better we know what happened, even... even if it's hard. And there's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. Come on. Let's go to the dock. It's time to finish this. Damn. So, Miriam actually had a son who very heartbreakingly died. And that is just... That's enough to tear you up, quite frankly. Um, and that's why she moved to Delos Crossing. And that's why where her life took a turn for the worse. But... Anyway, after you've uh, sort of teared up and you're all good to go, you can actually do these other puzzles. All it is, you can just see sort of drawings and things on the uh, after you uh, figure it out. But we're just going to carry on. So we come back to the outside. We're actually coming up now towards the very end. It's about, <clears throat> excuse me again, I'm not, I'm feeling uh, quite COVIDed up at the minute. <laughs> I'm just joking, I don't have COVID. But we are coming up to the docks for a long old cutscene and finally we get to see the truth and what we've been looking for. Tom? Tom Vecchi is our father? Of course. It had to be him. Tessa knew, didn't she? Yeah, she, she must have. That's what she didn't want to tell us. God, Marianne and Tom? I know. Ugh. What should we do now? Yeah, call him out here and make him tell us what was going on. And if he won't? We know his secret. He will. Tom? It's Allison. We need to talk. We know it was you. Ah, oh, ugh. Out of all the one rugged, burly man in Delos Crossing, well, sort of rugged, out of about four men I've seen, at least Sam had a decent beard, not grey pubes in his chin. But, Tom, well, loneliness gets the better of some people, eh? <laughs> Look. 
Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. I, mean, I thought I did, anyway. Sure. Whatever. As long as we get answers. Kids, listen. You're our father. <sighs> yes. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted? We didn't have anything to spare. Well, that winter was rough on everyone. It, you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cruel presumption, young man. Well, maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. You were here that night. You saw Marianne and Tyler. Why didn't you help? I know it wasn't my best moment, but she threatened my life. So you just decided to let her drown? I didn't decide anything. Everything happened so fast, I panicked. And by the time I got to town, Brown was already on his way out. There was nothing else I could do. So what do we do now? We tell him he's got to fix the mess he made, one way or another. You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want, as long as none of this gets out. Excuse me? You want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. But please, Tessa can't know. This would kill her. Tessa already knows, Tom. No. That's... That's impossible. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was you? Uh, I... But she... She never said anything. Oh, Lord. You should try talking to your wife. Maybe if you had, we wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Oh, come on. You of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or later. And you just couldn't risk being there when it happened even though it meant leaving her to raise kids out here all by herself. None of this would have happened if you'd manned the fuck up. I didn't have a choice. I know it shouldn't have happened. But, well, your mother was a very pretty woman. And she'd been so many places and done so many things. The way I always thought I would have. I got caught up. Love made me a fool. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Am I wrong? Jesus, Tom. I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it, but I will if I have to. What? Yeah. Your little story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Mary had really died. Tessa. 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 Tessa.
That night, I came out here because I was worried about your mother. No. No way. You're a fucking liar. I saw what I saw. Ugh! You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her. Tyler! You're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? You've got way more here to lose than he does. His name will be all but clear, but you... You'll be a killer. What will your uncle say? And Michael? Hmm? Well, the whole town might turn on you. Don't touch her. You know I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please. Think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of lives at stake here. Leave us the fuck alone. And never come back! Allie, you okay? You didn't let that asshole get to you, did you? Did you? What if he's right? I've been having all of these nightmares about that night, and they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. 
I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. She had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. She threatened Tom with those exact same words. With the same gun, on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here too? I guess it's possible. Fuck. I, I don't know. And we're never gonna know the truth, are we? Because the second you walk away from something, that's it. Yeah. I guess at this point, you just have to decide what you believe. Me? Yeah. You need to start dealing... Right, this can be slightly confusing, but if you've mainly picked the options that have made the twins' relationship stronger, with the star being together rather than apart, as I have done through the game, whatever memory you choose, you will get the same ending, and that is Tyler looking around the house one last time before leaving for good. But if you've chosen many bad options that have pushed the twins' relationship apart, again, as indicated by the star sign being separated rather than full, then you should choose the left side memory, which is believing Alison's story. And doing that should give you the Alison ending. But if you miss out on the Tyler ending, basically, if you choose all good uh, relationship options, you then choose the right side memory, which is believing Tom's story. That should get you Tom's ending. But I'm just showing you this to show that um, basically any ending you choose, if you've gone good throughout the entire game, you basically end up getting the Tyler ending anyway. So to get the Allison one, like I said, we need to basically uh, a bad guy throughout the majority of the game, which is a bit harsh, really. was lying. Marianne couldn't face being separated from her kids again, and the only way to make sure that never happened was for all of us to go together. I know it in my heart. I saved you. I saved us. I know. You did the right thing. You want to go back inside? Yeah.
Hey, peep what I just found downstairs. What do you think? A little have aged well, or just gone bad? Cheers, I guess. I can't believe Tom thought we'd buy that story. And that I almost did. Yeah, I still can't believe he and Marianne. What the hell did she see in him? She was probably just really, really lonely after she lost Leo. I could never get that lonely. Listen, with everything that's been going on, it got me thinking about our voice. Like, that maybe we should stop using it. What? I just don't trust it, and I think we'll be better off without it. This morning, I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions. Like, our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one who walked out. I just... I can't let that happen again. I, I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. But I really want to keep what makes us, us. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him. Because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted what do you the think? day he would emerge. Brothers and sisters. To once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. So then that is actually a very interesting ending. It doesn't give you a concrete ending. It's sort of whichever one that you want to believe. And pff, I don't know. I don't know. I'll leave the decision up to you. But I don't think Mir I think Marianne was pushed into it personally. I don't think she was as bad as she seemed. She was cracking. She was losing her head because Tom was a giant douche finger. Anyway, this is like the sort of um, epilogue. Now we're... It'll always have start off with that same scene six months later, and then this time we will know that Tyler, this is the Tyler ending. Otherwise, for the Allison ending, we see Allison packing her car. And goddamn, son, you've got that prison break from season one look, haven't you? <laughs> hey, looking good. Where's your locks gone, man? Where are they gone? <sighs> One last look, and I'm good to go. Hey.
Hey, it's me. Hey, me. <laughs> House is empty. I'm getting ready to head out. So, last chance. Is there anything you want me to do while I'm in town? Listen, Ty, you're dropping off the keys with Tina, right? Yep, gonna leave them at her office on my way to the ferry. Well, that's it then. So all we need to do then to finish this bit is there's photos that are on the same kitchen counter that we're on right now. You need to pick them up and then go over to the laptop, which is next to the ladder, as you can see on the left-hand side of the living room right there. Just pick up your laptop, pick up those photos, and then just leave the door. And that will get the credits rolling. That will unlock your two achievements. And then, like I said, whichever way you've gone through the game, if you've chosen mainly good or mainly bad, it's a certainty that you can just start from the cemetery scene in chapter two. That's just to be safe, rather than if you start from chapter three, you might not get enough and you would have wasted a little bit of time. So obviously you'd start off uh, chapter two, cemetery scene, pick all the opposite decisions, choose the correct, correct memory at the end, and that should unlock the other two ending achievements rather than having to start another whole new game, which would just be more of a pain in the ass. Ass, karma is a bitch. Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. See you tonight. Okay, I'm gonna take one last walk through the house and then head to the ferry. Drive safe. Uh, pretty sure that's the only way possible in the old Alice mobile. Love you, Tyler. Love you. Well, this is goodbye for real, I guess. Hey, Aaron, it's Ty, Tyler Ronan. I, uh, thought I'd catch you on your break between sessions, but I guess you're going long with another rebel with too many causes. <laughs> I, I know I haven't reached out since I left Fireweed, but I just wanted to say, well, you were right about grief, about it going in circles. This morning, I was out on the porch staring at the fog, and my mother, she, she just tumbled right out of me. But it was okay. It actually felt good to remember. Anyway, uh, give me a call back if you get a chance. I'll see you around. And thank you.
Right then, so for our second playthrough, we need to get out our inner dick. Oh, wait, no, not our inner dick, our inner asshole. Ah, uh, nah, that doesn't sound good either. Just being evil sounds a bitch. So any and every answer where possible, we need to be selfish or just be a complete dickhole in general. Of course, I'll let you know what answers are best. But if we go on to replay, go on to chapter 2, and go over to Last Rites, where Tessa's big old head is looking. This is where we will be starting. Do not replay it in isolation mode, because if you replay it in isolation mode, you can't actually get to the next scene. So you actually have to um, replay it and erase your progress. But hey, it's what we got to do for achievements sometimes. You know how it goes, you know how it goes. But of course, like I said, this will take roughly about an hour as we can just skip by holding the Y button. We can now skip all of the cutscenes which just makes this a little bit quicker. But like I said, we just need to be a complete knobhead in general. But what I have done, <clears throat> excuse me again, I've actually kept these scenes of what we need to do in rather than just cut them up bit by bit. So you can still follow along with me with sort of no worries. So again, we'll still have to do a little bit of gameplay as in um, look at the memories, do a little bit of story related um, progress and things like that but like I said roughly about an hour so it shouldn't be too long but I've kept it in so you guys can still follow along anyway because I'm such a nice guy aren't I and I love you guys I love you guys Here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. Be right there. I better make sure he doesn't get lost. De Leon. That's the one. <sighs> Don't. You really have to go, Eddie. You can hold my hand if you want. I can walk fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? And we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember it. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know I said we didn't have to visit her grave. But it feels like the right thing to do. Do you remember where she is? No. For what it's worth, I remember staring at the water during the funeral. Uh, Allison, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going. Well, Allison, a few steps in, come back. I'm already starting to regret this. <sighs> yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time, no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards, you and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. Right then, so the first dickhole move that we're going to be doing is choosing Tyler's memory at this totem pole here in the cemetery. So that is the sort of more selfish one, the one that makes Allison feel extra guilty. So it's the one on the left hand side. So make sure to choose Tyler's memory here. This is um, quite important. There sort of the, like I think the conversations you have where you're negative and things, they add up a little bit, but it's moments like this which add up quite a big bit of um, de-strengthening, weakening our relationship with our sister. So I'll obviously let you know which are the big main important bits. So the left side, choose Tyler's memory. And then what you can do with it is then just simply move on and go to Marianne's grave, where we have a conversation with Big Tessa. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible, but I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. I'll be back. But I'm gonna come see you every week, and we'll talk with our voice every day. We'll see each other soon then. Stop crying, silly. We have to go, kids. God, I can 
could have sworn it went the other way. I'm so sorry. I, I should have staged a hunger strike until Eddie agreed to drive me. Hey, water under the bridge. This spot's familiar. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. You think? Ty. This, this is it. Tessa? Kids. Now another important bit is coming up, of course you can just keep pressing and holding the Y button to skip the cutscenes, but be careful because one of the decisions you need to make will uh, come up obviously quite quickly as you'll be able to see. So you can keep skipping certain cutscenes, but don't do it straight away just in case you choose the wrong option, so you should be good for the moment. And as you'll see now, it'll go to this sort of next little scene. And what it'll do then, just one of the answers that you've got to choose will just come up on screen rather than having to wait for Tessa to finish her sentence. Like now. So very important, choose A. You destroyed our family. Very important again to choose that one. You destroyed our family. Typical. Running away when things get tough. I don't buy that Marianne pushed you away. You turned your back on her. And now you're making excuses. Like always, you destroyed our family. You don't even have the decency to admit it. I know I've made mistakes. You went through a very challenging time and anyone... I see. Then I guess... That was something, huh? Yeah, it was. Well, if you feel like saying I told you so, now's the time. Everyone in our lives back then, none of them really gave a shit about us. Sorry, I, d I didn't mean... It's okay. I mean, we had to force the truth out of Eddie, too. But... At least Even when we sit down with Allison right here, again, just choose exactly the same ones I do, but basically you're always just looking out for the negative or the angry sort of reactions. That's what we need to be choosing. But of course, if you're just following along, choose exactly the same dialogue options I do, and it will guarantee you, it should guarantee you anyway, to get the other two achievements at the end of the game. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Well, this reunion's kind of gone off the rails, huh? Oh, you mean how we kind of turned Delos Crossing upside down and shook out all its nasty secrets? Yeah, but at least now we know what really happened. I can't thank you enough, by the way. Hey, brothers and sisters, right? But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately, which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, are you still blaming yourself for that? Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. You were just dealing with what happened the way that you needed to, alright? As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house. And you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. You hear? For sure. And anyway, that's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. 
So I guess we know the story now. was a, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. What guy? What did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight, and, and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Hey, come check this out. Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? I guess we know how he made the hole. So there is nothing really of any importance here. This is just um, still going through the game. Like I said, I would still go through the same scenes and the, and the, the game with you. Um, sadly, for some reason, I cannot remember at all what the bloody code was, so I end up going into the back, getting a pair of snips, and just unlocking the box here. I don't know, again, if that's important to the relationship of the twins, but it might just be worth um, cutting open the box anyway. It might just be a little bit of uh, weakening of the relationship there, as Alison, you know, she's the high and mighty one. She wants to do it the proper way, but Tyler's the... Gruff old man who just wants to smash everything open. <laughs> Manly stuff. Fuck. That's rough. Guessing she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. It's everything. What the hell? So, Marianne hid a box under the barn. A box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. It's pretty clear what happened. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. That guy had an affair with Marianne, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. anything about that night. I would have said the same thing, but something felt different. The Mad Hunter! Wait, there was someone here that night? In the woods? No, it was just, I, I saw, who the hell did I actually see? That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait! He was here once before, wasn't he? Another important, very important bit of dialogue to make Alison feel extremely guilty and weaken the relationship. Soon as this sort of cutscene begins, obviously press Y to skip it and then choose X, even after what I did for you. So there you go, the X button then, even after what I did for you, and that will sour the relationship a little bit more, which is what we need, even if we don't feel that good about it. No, no. I just can't keep doing this. 
What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? You're stepping on my foot. Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet. We don't want mom to catch us out of bed. I don't owe you anything. You've been a little... all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. What happened? But we were so damn close. Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! So now then we can just continue on to chapter 3, of course we don't need to be grabbing any collectibles or anything, so we can just again quickly nip through the story just a little bit. Um, and the first really important part of this scene is when we uh, have that little episode where Michael's showing us the house. So we've got, uh, we've got about 5 minutes until we get to that point yet, so we'll just blast through the story as quick as we can. What the... to get all that paperwork together. Maybe that'll help me focus and clear. Here's the file. Just need my ID and pay stubs. Okay. We were family, Allison. How could you do this to me? <sighs> Fuck. I've got to think about something else. Focus. ID and pay stubs. Ah, here's my ID. This place was never much more than a bachelor pad, huh? There was so much I planned to do. All those sacrifices I made. And how do you repay me? Lying to my face. You're not my child. My claim is it better. Torturing yourself. Just grab your pay stubs so you can get the hell out of here. I told him I wanted to stop messing with those memories, but he wouldn't listen. <gasps> Sister, we look out for each other. That's what you said. But you don't mean what you say, do you? They're just words. You left me, Allison. 
all alone and scared. <laughs> wrong with me here they are okay I think I've got everything I need for the application where's that coming from where did I leave my phone last night? I... No, no, no. I cannot deal with you right now. What's it doing here? Hey, Dee. Finally. I was starting to get worried. Why didn't you pick up? Yeah, uh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't have my phone on me. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were still on for lunch. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm getting ready right now. That so? Because it kind of sounds like I woke you up. That's just how I sound. But anyways, I still have a few things to do before I can leave, but I'll be there. All right, hon. See you soon. <sighs> Get it together, Allison. Come on, grab the file, get dressed, and head out. Or it'd be nice to make a gift for Dee. God, my hands are still shaking. I, uh... We had a fight. If you're going to lecture me, save it. She had it coming. You two didn't say anything she wasn't already thinking. Did he talk about the new spicy chocolate bars? Yep. And exactly what they do to his digestion. Well, he said you don't have to rush back to the store. Oh, <laughs> good. Because I did not plan to. Tess has been venting nonstop about your fight. Seriously, bad vibes over there right now. I know the feeling. <sighs> I'm glad you're here, Michael. Thanks for coming. Of course. When I heard what happened, I knew the bitch's grotto had to go mobile. Guess I've got plenty of time to binge the last season of Witches of Eldom now that I'm fun employed. Wait till you see how they did Mabel. You're gonna rage quit just like I did. I don't know. I've got a lot of free time ahead of me. I, uh... I've been kind of freaking out on repeat today. What do you mean? It's hard to describe, but... I just can't calm down. You ever try any of that affirmation type shit? Look, when things get dark, I tell myself that whatever I'm going through will pass. That I'm a great person and my feelings are valid. <sighs> this will pass. I'm a great person. My feelings are valid. We'll work on it, but that's a good start. So, do you want to talk about what got you fired? Not really, no. Sorry. It's all right. Allison, what's going on? Tyler and I had a fight last night. I was so excited to have him back, but what if 10 years was too much and we're too different? I don't think so. You just need to get to know each other again. Start with the small shit. Figure out what each other's favorite foods are, you know? And then build up to the big stuff. Yeah. That, that makes sense. The last few days have been a lot. It's totally okay to be overwhelmed. You're gonna figure it all out. Families are fucked up. <laughs> They're basically fuck-up factories. You're right. I so here it is then, the next really important part coming up, and we are not 
going to tell Michael about our memories. So when the option comes up, it's the X button, but do not tell Michael about his memory or our memories even. So don't tell him. And that will just sour it again. And there's also going to be another couple of dialogue options which will weaken the relationship again with Tyler just a little bit further. So just make sure to copy the exact same dialogue options once again that I do. Whatever. I don't think it's going to do much good. He's convinced he's meant to be alone. Uh, nothing really important of any note. We're just going to be doing what we did earlier. So go and check your file in Brown Pants's uh, thing to the left of the door there, in that little filing cabinet. Go down, eat some cobbler in the kitchen. And sadly, again, it's one of those waiting time sessions, waiting for disaster. Hurry up and stop doing a blade job properly. Bleh. I wonder how Uncle's feeling about me moving away. We haven't really talked about it. Morning. Hola, Miss Ronan. <laughs> Dessert for lunch. Pretty cool, right? Uh, pretty cool, yeah. I've always had a sweet tooth. Got it from my mom. She baked darn near every day. Need to start being a little careful, though. Doctor's orders. Brenda may be in for it, too. <laughs> God, that kid can eat. Linda's pretty concerned, but, uh, growing boys, right? He needs the extra energy. He wants to let her in wrestling, and, who boy, is he working hard. Damn. Sometimes I miss being 14. What are they talking about? They're talking about none of your business, young lady. On my way there next. I'm gonna have to tell the whole hospital what happened. So I have that cute little criminal locked up in a kennel in the back of my car, and I really kind of need to get to work. I, I'd appreciate no, I it if you could take spine, him to right? animal control. Dirty work, so I can take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. You can't imagine how many hours we've spent on this case. Ms. I think Ronan. I'll need to requisition your dog's kennel for dropping. the day, though. Sure, no problem. She doesn't care for it that much anyway. All right, I'll meet you outside in a minute. Then we will proceed with the preparation. Okay. I'll wait for your instructions in the parking lot. Hey, sorry I kept you waiting. No worries. You'll never believe it. We caught the mailbox bandit. And guess who it was? Let me guess. Some bored kid? Eh, wrong. It's a raccoon. Delos Crossing's most wanted turned out to be some trash panda stowaway. <laughs> and this is how legends begin. Anyway, hun, I'm so sorry to bail, but I gotta run this little guy to animal control now. Probably best I take a rain check. Oh, it's, it's okay. Totally, I understand. Duty calls. Thanks. Well, we need to try again soon. 
I feel so bad about missing your birthday. I thought about making you something, but I was a little strapped for time, so. No, I get it. With your brother back, I see where your priorities are now. What? No, no, it's not. Relax, I'm just kidding. I really gotta go now. Right, I'll call you later. And try to get some sleep, all right? See ya. Well, there go my lunch plans. Hey, your brother didn't tag along today? No. He didn't really want to show his face around here after the mess he made yesterday, huh? It's not really any of your business. I know things sounded pretty heated, but it was just family stuff. Oh, yeah? That way it broke into the archive? And assaulted Brown because of family stuff? Look, we're all worried about you. This isn't the Allison we know. The Allison you know? Yeah, the sweet, smart girl who'd never hurt anyone on purpose. I know you two and the chief made peace, but I gotta say, it ate at him all day. I'm sorry, but I really don't want to have this conversation right now. I, I had a rough morning. <sighs> okay. Okay. So we're back doing the minigame. This time we don't have to do a ting. Literally, we need to be failing the breathing app. So literally you don't even have to do anything you can just keep looking on your phone or you know looking to see if you've got any uh, water in special areas or anything Wh whatever you like to do for five minutes you go ahead and do it I know judge I know judge I just need to breathe in and out follow the circles I just want to be okay. to just let go. What's happening? I'm so scared, Allison. Me too. I don't want to go. And maybe... Maybe we should tell them the truth. Are you sure? I don't know. Maybe. But... What if we get in trouble and then we both oh, get sent away? Hey, Chief Brown. Wait. I, uh... I went back to the house and got these three kids. They, uh, they wouldn't let me take anything else. I'm, I'm sorry. Sam, please tell them to let us stay together. Please. Oh, gosh. Please. I, I don't have that kind of power. Sam. Oh, kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Right. Also... For this one, when we get up to Chief Brown Pants office, we are not going to tell him that we murdered Marianne. So this time, do not tell him that we murdered Marianne. So it'll just be the X button a, a couple of times. I want to forget. I just want to forget. And then we can just move on from there. But again, very important here to not tell him we killed her. I could forget about it all. Never think about it again. You can't go on letting it haunt your every waking moment. Tired? 
Kyler keeps telling me that too. So you t Exhausted. But not like I'm about to. I remember he brought us our goblin figurines. He was over at our house a lot. Tyler, are you there? Okay, guess we're still doing that. So now then we are going to have a little conversation with Sam again, sadly, it's the sort of waiting around for another couple of minutes until we can give him the red lube spray can, um, which again might take between sort of three and four minutes, but this time we're going to be generally quite hostile and nasty towards Sam. So uh, there's going to be an option which we'll call him a liar, call him a liar, and then when we get upstairs we'll basically just Again, any negative, nasty comments, just use them against Sam right here when we actually get to that point. Otherwise, like I said, at this bit, it's just a little bit of waiting around, which is a bit annoying when you kind of want to just get on with it, but tis the way it tis. Again, you'll just be following my same dialogue options anyway, so you should be fine. need something? I was hoping to, uh, I actually wanted to check out your boat, is all. Uh, yeah. Well, all right, uh, here she is. Are you gonna be long? I was hoping we could talk. I don't need my ears to fix an engine. What's up? I, uh... Never mind. Uh, where's your brother? We had a fight. <laughs> Bit of sibling rivalry, huh? Well, you should have seen me and my little brother have at it. Right up... Right up till the end. How's the, uh, how's the house coming along? Honestly, physically painful. It'll be a miracle if I don't throw out my back. Let your brother do the heavy lifting. So he can throw his back out? <laughs> Not better. So, um, I was over at the station and... I was thinking about some things. Yeah? You've known us for a while. Your whole lives. You puked all over my slick denim button-up. That's a nice memory. Oh, okay. I am so sick of being lied to. I'm so sick of this. Come in. 
Come in. Oh. When was the last time you cracked a window? <laughs> Heat's on the fritz. Ugh. What's all this? Here, I, uh, kept a few things. Can I? She looks happy. Mm. She was. When was this? Why are you wearing a square hat? Oh, uh, yeah, Laura took this one. We'd been working on that barn for months. That roof was a son of a bitch to sheath. Rain just kept on leaking into the loft. Wait, the barn has a loft? Oh, yeah. You didn't know? No, she didn't tell us. Is that a trap door? Yeah. Jimmy closed the whole thing up. <laughs> Told her it was gonna be real hard to get any hay up there, but she said she didn't mind. Do you know what's up there? Look at yourself. That's enough. How long are you... So we basically told the lazy alcoholic to get off his ass and stop feeling sorry for himself. Oh, isn't, that, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? What an intervention that is. But now we are coming up to the ice fishing section with Mike and Tyler. Now this time, of course, we know that it does go on for quite a while, around sort of eight to nine minutes or so. But what we need to do, Listen. we we need you to not fish for the second and third one. I think the first time you got to fish, you got to do it automatically anyway. But literally, you can just leave it for the rest of the game. You don't have to worry about it. And again, it's choosing all the negative dialogue options, sort of the ones that Tyler suffered more than Allison options. And we need to be rejecting Mike's advances this time. So when he's all like, hey, honey, you can lean on me. Watch out for my left shoulder, though. <laughs> That's a funny joke. We'd be like, nah, bruh, not into that. Sorry, hon. But again, like I said, you just follow the you follow in the video, you're following the same dialogue options I do anyway, so again, it should be all golden gravy. I don't know if I'm in the mood. No way. After all that talk, you're not backing down on me, are you? I, I don't know. Come on, we're burning daylight. Let's go. Got everything you need, by the way? Yeah, I'm good. Man. I'm so gonna miss this. Miss what? Just hanging out and fishing and... You know, I'm not gonna have a lot of time after you move to Juno with school and the JC and everything. Right, right. So did any of the people you came up with at Fireweed land in Juno? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Once they left, I never really kept in touch. Really? People came and went a lot. And besides, everyone moves on eventually, right? <laughs> Not everyone. Not people who get so close, they're like family. I already have a family. Well, there's a reason we think of families as trees. They keep on sprouting new branches and... Oh, uh, hey, I think I've got a bite. You got this. Reel them in. Come on. Pull up on the rod. I got it. I got it. Mm. Slippery little. Got it. <laughs> Bravo. First of many. Pace yourself. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Thanks, Sensei. Oh, hey, did you want to make solid plans to hit the buzzard hole? The river might ice over soon, so we shouldn't wait too long. 
Uh, not now. With the way things are, I'd rather not make any promises. No problem. I, I can be flexible, so just let me know if that changes. Hey, so the other day you were talking about your chosen family. How did you find them? Well, high school can be kind of rough when you gotta hide who you are every second of the day. I got to a pretty dark place. I can relate to that. One morning, my uncle woke me up and told me to get into his car. I figured we are going fishing or something, but then we ended up outside the Juno Coalition for Equality. Your uncle brought you to the JCE? Yep. Yeah. He didn't know how to help, so he found someone who did. That sounds amazing. You know, even if you don't move to Juno, my offer still stands. The JCE holds a monthly meeting. You meet a lot of good people there. I don't know. It sounds like you're good, but I'm not sure I'd fit in. No pressure. Just letting you know the door is open. You got anything good in there? Maybe, but who says I'm willing to share? Okay, fine. Be that way. All right, here we go. So, about last night, I don't know what Allison said, but from my side, well, I thought we were on the same page, but it turns out we weren't. Hey, so don't tell her I told you, but last week your sister was almost unbearable. She was jumping up and down with excitement at you coming back. Really? <laughs> you better believe it. Look, the last time you saw each other, you were kids. Just because things have changed doesn't mean you can't work it out. <sighs> but what if we can't? If she doesn't understand why all this is important to me, then maybe we're just too different. We were finally about to get some answers and she fucking ran off. Well, can you blame her? <sighs> Avoiding the problem doesn't make it go away. She's so fixated on selling the house. It's like she's trying to bury the past. All of it. Even the good parts. Look, I'm not picking sides here. Okay, but she's been murder house girl ever since it happened. Now she's got a chance to put it behind her and start fresh. <laughs> Shit, I'd be pretty eager too. Yeah, well, I was the kid who killed his mom, and I still found a way to confront my shit. I mean, I'm here, doing the work. Even though, every second, I've got to fight the urge to run straight back. To fireweed, you mean? Yeah. When I first got there, all I could think about was getting out. It felt like a cage. But after a while, it started to feel more like a shell. I figured out who I was in there. But now, I've got to work out how to be that person out here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, none of us really know what we're doing. Like, shit may look bleak now, but your sister's never going to give up on you. And you can lean on me too if you want. Just be careful, okay? I've got a bad left shoulder. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. Thanks for listening. Don't mention it. So... What are you going to make with what we catch? Hey, you got me figured out. Slice of fresh fish, topped with garlic, pesto, walnuts, just a drop of olive oil. Pure perfection. As my partner in crime, you're entitled to a cut. Uh, me and pesto have a bad history. I accept cash, though. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Don't you say anything. I got this. Hey, can I, can I ask you something that's pretty personal? Sure. Take off the gloves. You, uh, 
you've been with people, right? Uh, romantically? Uh, yeah. A few. Have you? Uh, no. Not really. That's kind of surprising. Well, people say it's about finding your other half, but I don't really feel like anything's missing. Which is actually super healthy. I guess the way I see it is it's not about being completed, but having like someone to spend the ride with, you know? Huh. Yeah, I can see that. You want my take on it? Sure. Heartbreak sucks. Look. I stopped listening to the entire indie folk genre just because I was dumped at a show once. But I put myself back out there just like everyone who's ever gotten their heart stomped on. Because when you meet someone who really sees you, you don't have to pretend anymore. Yeah, that all sounds nice, but it's just not me. A true lone wolf? I can respect that. Hey, you've been dangling that line an awful long time. Sure you didn't forget the bait? Here, watch a master at work. Take it away. Whoa, here. Sorry for interrupting. So, what is it? I was just at Sam's. He's not our father. How do you know? I asked him, point blank. And you took his word for it? He was crazy in love with Marianne. Whoever set that fire was doing damage control. And Sam's... Nothing but damage. I guess he really doesn't have anything left to lose, does he? There's something else. Look at this. This was taken in 1992 when Marianne first moved to Delos Crossing. See that ladder? Sam told me the barn has a loft. He helped her build it. Apparently she never told anyone about it. And it's still there? As far as he knows, yeah. What do you think? Should we give it a shot? We've come this far. And a hidden loft? That's got secret shit written all over. So hopefully then we just got past the ice fishing section with no problems, chose all these cynical asshole co comments. And that really does remind me of a uh, South Park quote. Remember where, uh, for any South Park fans, remember where Stan is being miserable, depressed? This is basically that playthrough. And one of the doctors says, yes, it's a condition known as being a cynical asshole. <laughs> that, that works wonders. That is basically this playthrough down to a T, so we won't call it a second playthrough, we'll call it a being a cynical asshole playthrough. Seems to work either way. <laughs> but of course, remember for this bit we need to look at Alison's picture, um, have a look at the sort of shelves and, and a couple of things and then we can use the switch. But what we are doing this time, we're actually just completely skipping all the puzzles in the band's loft, we're going to skip them all. We're just going to try a couple of letters on the box, back out. Tyler will eventually mention a crowbar, which is by the hole on this floor right here. And then we can just break it open. That will again weaken the relationship immensely. Just a regular old light switch. The handle should be behind this. Ah, oh, there it is. It's opening up. The secret keeper always did store all the best secrets in the clouds. Yep. Come on, let's find a way to climb up there.
So like I said, ignore the puzzles. Um, best thing to do is just try a couple of letters, sort of two or three times. You'll then have to back out to be able to get the dialogue to keep going. He won't actually say it while you're trying to turn this. So turn him a couple of times, back out, do it once more, a couple of times turn, back out, and then Tyler will mention the crowbar. Possibilities. Probably quicker just to see if she left us a hint somewhere. Why don't we just break this open? There's a crowbar right downstairs. What? No. You don't want to try and figure out what all this means? I'm so done with her riddles. There you are, trusty crowbar. I think I'm just gonna break this open. I mean, really? This is all pretty elaborate. I think she was trying to tell us something. Whatever she wants us to know, it's clearly in here. I'm done with the rest of it. Did it just get darker in here? Ollie, she, uh, she noticed. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? What? Who is that? Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she? You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. Right, so now we are, like I said, we are coming up to the end in cutscene. Of course, we've only got one more thing left to choose, and it is very important to choose the Marianne was threatening Tyler memory at the very end, which of course is the left side memory. It's very important that you choose that one. If you end up choosing the uh, Tom's version, then you might actually unlock Tyler's ending again, and that would just be a pain in the ass to have to come through all this <laughs> once again, wouldn't it? But of course, like I said, this time we don't have to wait for 20 minutes. We can literally just skip the cutscene, skip the cutscene until we get to the end right there. And then we should be good to go. It's really sad, isn't it, that uh, Tom ended up being our dad. I mean, he just looks like a bloody one of those guys that creeps in the bushes and pervs on everyone and everything. And you just want to slap him in the tits. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had.
You tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. So after skipping all them cutscenes, once again remember to choose the left side memory. Marianne was threatening Tyler, and that should, when we get to it, you should then see Allison packing her car, and that means that you we, we've basically got to that point. You, if you followed my guide, you should get the see Allison packing her car, and then we should get the Allison ending, and we should also get the achievement for. Ending the game with the twins bond weakened. And then that should be that. Hooray! Well, I hope you've enjoyed the game and the guys. I know I bloody did. Fantastic. And, you know, I hope that we had a nice laugh through it all, didn't we? Because we always have a good laugh. Me and you. And you and you and you and everyone who watches. Just sort of one more quick note, if you want to be extra dickish to Tyler, just hang up on him by pressing the B button straight away. And, um, yeah, that, you know, that just sort of puts the cherry on the cake, really, doesn't it? So, tell him, <laughs> alright, it's been a long conversation, thanks, but gotta go now. B! And all you got to do then to end this section, again, if you want to take a look around the house and see what Big Al has done with the house, more than welcome. But we are just going to um, have a look on her desk and click on her book. That will basically say, write the final chapter. And I've actually left the cutscene in for you, this Alison cutscene, rather than skip it. So you, so you can have a look for yourself. And it's a very powerful, but very beautiful message at the end. To work. Come on, Alison. A friend? What is that? The princess frowned, for she realized that the two tiny thieves were as lonely as she was. A friend is someone you love and care for. Someone you would never hurt. Yeah, right. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a solitary goblin in a big wooden house. That goblin had not always been so solitary. She had a twin, and when they were younger, they were inseparable. Together, they rescued princesses. And 
and outsmarted ice trolls, and even trapped a mad hunter. But as she grew older, the goblin sister decided that she'd had enough of adventures. So while her brother went out to explore the world, she stayed behind as guardian of the big wooden house. For it is not on all of us to adventure. Some must stay behind to tell the story and to hold shelter for those who make And that is that then, guys and gals. So that is it. All three chapters to tell me why is uh, done. Like I said, hopefully you enjoyed the game. Hopefully you enjoyed the guide as well. We did have a brilliant laugh and an Hopefully we had a great time through it as well. This is where your two achievements should now unlock. And then you would have 1,500 out of 1,500 in the game. But again, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. If this video did help, of course, if these videos did help, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on all my socials. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. And of course, if you do want to uh, be in with a shout of winning extra prizes, getting extra content, add free content, etc. Then just head over to patreon.com forward slash the Welsh Hunter. Also a big massive thank you and a big shout out to Tim G84 for continuing his support on the show, on the channel. But again, thank you so much for watching guys and gals and I shall see you in the next one. Big love.